Now the last step in defining our HRUs is to define the slopes. So I've clicked on the slope tab already. Recall that the model is, is going to use your existing elevation raster and it's already calculated the slopes. What we're going to do here is we're going to break those slopes down into a few classes. We don't want to use every individual slope throughout the watershed. That would be too complicated. We just need to break these down into a few classes. So basically you're, you're looking at you know, very flat, moderately sloped, very steep, things like that. Okay. Again, these are values that you can play with and they are going to be different for different types of watersheds. What I'm going to show you is what was recommended to me when I took the workshop and again this is something that you can adjust and, and see if it has any effect on the model in the future. So what we need to do is we don't want to use a single slope. Um, obviously that wouldn't be very useful. So we're going to use multiple slopes. And so now we need to define how many classes we want. The more classes, the more it captures the topography of the watershed. My bet is that Spring Lake's watershed is pretty flat. We don't need too many, but we're going to go ahead and do five. And we want to set the current slope class to one because we're going to start with slope class one. And so the upper limit of slope class one is going to be 10%. When I click Add, you'll note that Class 1 has now switched from 0 to 10%, and the lower limit of Class 2 is 10%. And so based upon that, let's just switch to Class 2 and set its upper limit to 20. Then Class 3 we'll set its upper limit to, excuse me, 30. Class 4 will set its upper limit to 50. And then Class 5 is anything above 50. So you see that we're taking the moderate slopes and breaking them down and then the, the, very, the steeper slopes are going to be more rare and they can all be broken down into the final two classes. Once you do that, just like before, let's just hit reclassify. And it says the slope reclassify has completed. And that's it. Now we have set up everything that we need in order to define our um, HRU. So at this point, we're ready to create our HRUs. So come down here and create overlay report is already checked. Leave it checked check the box for create HRU feature class which is sort of the point of all this and when you're ready click overlay so now ArcSWAT is going to use all the land use the soil type and the slope to break each of these sub basins down into these small HRUs each of one has a unique combination of land use soil and slope and they're also unique within each Subbasin. And you see that did not take long for our small watershed, so we hit OK. And at this point, the HRUs have been defined. So before we do anything, let's go to SWAT Project Setup. Let's save our project. Always a good idea. Now we can go to HRU Analysis and look at the um, let's see, we need to click on HRU definition now. So what we just did was we just made a polygon shape file. Um, and maybe it's a raster, I'm not sure. But at any rate, we created this shape file that has all the unique combinations of soil, land use, and slope. But we have not actually defined the HRUs yet. We just have all the unique combinations. So with this screen, we're now going to actually define the different um, HRUs. So what we want to do is choose multiple HRUs because we want to treat each of them individually. We're going to base our thresholds on a percentage. 
And then we can change the percentages down here. You've got land use, soil, and slope. And basically what you can do here is you can aggregate some of these um, very small HRUs into larger HRUs. And so this is basically saying this is the minimum size you need to be in order to be included in a unique HRU. And what this is doing is trying to um, make the model more, more simple, um, trying to simplify the model, trying to make your computing cycles a little bit, uh, the fewer computing cycles make it a little bit easier to run. So basically, as you make these threshold values larger, you're going to get bigger HRUs. So the model is going to be less precise, but it's going to maybe run a little smoother. So you can change these to anything that you want. However, I don't think we need to mess with any of that. I think we have enough computing cycles and enough power that we can just leave these all at zero. So basically, every unique combination of land use, soil, and slope will be considered a unique HRU. So again, for example, say you had a small area within a field that was a ditch. And so it has a different land use. And if you increase the slider to say 10%, if that small area was less than 10% of the subbasin, then it would not be treated individually. It would just be lumped in with everything else because it's just such a small area, we're not going to mess with it. But I think we can mess with it. We want to be as precise as we can, so let's leave these at zeros for now. We'll see how it works. You want to make sure that write HRU report is checked. Now we're actually going to build our HRUs. And so it's going for, through each subbasin now and defining an HRU within each subbasin. So that way, if you've got two HRUs that have the exact same land use, soil type, and slope, but they're in different subbasins, they're going to be treated differently, which they should be because they're in different geographical locations. And so this is taking a little bit more time, but again, it doesn't take very long for our model And there you have it. We've completed the HRU definition. So let's hit OK. Let's come up here to HRU analysis. And we look at we want to look at, excuse me, the analysis reports. And we'd like to see the final HRU distribution, just out of curiosity. So we hit OK, and now we get a text file that shows the breakdown of every one of these HRUs. And so if you look, here's the, the breakdown for the entire watershed. You've got the area of the watershed. You've got the land use within the watershed by percentage and by hectare and by acre. You've got the breakdown of the different soil types within the watershed. You've got the breakdown of the different slopes. So you see that we don't have any slopes greater than 30 percent. Most of our watershed is less than 10 percent, which is what you expect. That's for the whole watershed. Now you have the same values for each individual subbasin. You might recall that when we delineate, delineated the watershed, we had 25 subbasins. So in subbasin 1 is 301 hectares, and it's, um, let me go ahead and expand this a little and 95% of that subbasin is agriculture. And then you've got the soil types. And then within the subbasin, you have each individual HRU. And so you see HRU1 is agricultural land, generic, this soil type, and this slope. And that makes up 7% of the subbasin. Then if you look, here we've got the same land use, different soil type, same slope, so that's a different HRU, and that's going to be 54% of the subbasin. And so if you scroll down, you see that there are 21 different HRUs within that subbasin. 
Now we're at subbasin number two. And here's the size of that subbasin, and we've got the different land use soils and slopes, and then here are the different HRUs within that subbasin. But you'll note that the HRUs are continued to be numbered consecutively because each one's going to be treated separately. So the model is going to run within each of these HRUs. And so the model is going to spit out things like the discharge and the soil load from each HRU. And then it's going to sum them up for each subbasin. That's going to sum up all the subbasins. And that's going to tell us what's running in to Spring Lake. That is pretty cool. So um, now we've got these defined. The next step is going to be to um, look at weather and then use the, once the weather is defined, then we can run the model.